who's out. Dwayne Corona, but I still got some signs I can show ya. No class, no school. That's cool. Throw the class on the YouTube. Even if they shut the school down, I'll get that knowledge anyway somehow. Real scholars won't stop for Corona. Tune in for that science takeover. Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Mrs. Finney's science class. We are now at 131 subscribers. Shout out to the HB Warriors. We are on week three of our online science class. Thank you for tuning in. And thank you to everyone else for subscribing and tuning in as well. Let's get started with today's lesson. So in today's lesson, we're talking about uh, cells and genetics still. Lesson six, cell theory. Section two, cells of unicellular organisms. Last week, we talked about multicellular organisms, right? And those are organisms that have many cells. Today, we're tapping into unicellular organisms. And so these ones, a little bit different. All right, your learning objective for today, I can explain characteristics of unicellular organisms. Let's get into it. Quickly name five kinds of living things. Any five. Anything that comes to mind. Okay. Were bacteria on your list? Yay? Nay? Okay. Bacteria are the smallest known organisms. The smallest bacteria are so tiny that over two million of them could fit on the head of a pen. How are bacteria different from plants, animals, and most fungi? So let's get into that. Bacteria are different from plants, animals, and most fungi in many ways, but one of the most important differences is that they are unicellular organisms. Yeah, what are they? Okay, these are organisms that are made of only one cell. An entire organism operating off of one cell. So all we need is one cell, one cell, get the job done. Those type of organisms, right? The word unicellular has the prefix uni, meaning one, like a unicycle, is a vehicle with one wheel. A unicellular organism has one cell. Archaea, another type of tiny organism, are also unicellular. Archaea can be found living in extreme environments where other organisms would not be able to survive, such as extremely hot or extremely salty environments. Often the water of salt flats, where salt is collected, is pink in color because there are so many of these pinkish colored type of archaea living in the water. All right. Unicellular organisms are small. That's obvious. They are so small that they usually cannot be seen without a microscope. And that's something we'll get into a little later to figure out how do we use a microscope? What are the main uh, parts of a microscope. So we'll talk about that down the road. Because you have to use a tool to see them, they can be said to exist at a smaller scale or unit of measurement than the things you can see with just your eyes. A unicellular organism behaves differently than a cell in a multicellular organism. Let's get into some differences. Despite its size, the one cell of a unicellular organism can survive entirely on its own without cooperating with any other cells. It is holding it down for the organism alone. Talk about isolation, not wanting to hang out with anybody. There's your unicellular organism acting like they don't need any new friends. <laughs> Okay, so in other words, oh, let's get back here. Where were we? Oh, here we go. Unlike the cell of a multicellular organism, if the cell of a unicellular organism divides, another organism is made. Okay, in other words, this is the way that most unicellular organisms reproduce or have offspring. Also, if the cell of a unicellular organism dies, the whole organism is dead, unlike in a multicellular organism. Last week, we talked about how multicellular organisms, they have many cells. And so if one of those cells die, 
then it'll just get replaced by another cell, things of that nature. But in the case of a unicellular organism, since it wants to be all alone and hold it down all alone, when it goes, the organism goes. All right, so that's a huge difference between unicellular organism and multicellular organism. Cells of unicellular organisms are generally not speciali specialized. This means that the one cell of the organism will perform all of the functions that organism needs to do to survive. Also, the cells of a particular type of unicellular organism will generally all look the same and they will function very similarly. All right. For example, all the cells of a type of bacteria called E. coli are shaped like little rods. How many of you have heard of E. coli before? Most of the time when people think of it, they're like, oh, something that makes folks sick. Let's talk about that. All right, what in the world is E. coli? All right, so check it into Mayo Clinic. They say it's a bacteria normally that lives in the intestines of healthy people and animals. Uh, most varieties of E. coli are harmless or cause relatively brief diarrhea, but a few particularly nasty strands can cause severe abdominal cramps, bloody diarrhea, and vomiting. Woo. You may be exposed to E. coli from contaminated, listen, water or food, especially raw vegetables or undercooked ground beef. Healthy adults usually recover from infection with E. coli uh, 0157H7 within a week, but young children and older adults have a greater risk of developing a life-threatening form of kidney failure called hemolytic aremic syndrome. All right, so here are some sin, uh, symptoms that we already covered. But let's take a look at this video. It's a very friendly version of how to avoid E. coli. And that video was provided by the American Heart Association. All right, let's also have a different conversation. All right. So we want to also talk about bacteria that could be on an object that most of us use, a cellular phone. Do you have germs on your cell phone? Hmm. Do you clean your cell phone often? Your cell phone case, you know? Do you wipe it down? Do you avoid placing it in places that could be very dirty, such as the bathroom? So let's take a look at something that was done in regards to germs on phone. All right. It's actually the front and back of somebody's phone, but you can see that there's quite a lot of bacteria on that plate. You know, bacteria are part of our normal life. They're not going to harm us. They're not dangerous. You can't be paranoid about bacteria because they're everywhere. But clearly, throughout the day, you can possibly become exposed to potentially pathogenic bacteria. So we began to question, what about cell phones? How contaminated are those cell phones? So we had uh, 19 people offer up their cell phones to be tested. And we swabbed first the front of the cell phone, and we swabbed the back of the cell phone. So we had a total of 38 samples. So when it comes to the laboratory, what we do is we take those swabs, we do a quick little vortexing just to make sure it's an even distribution. So now we're going to inoculate the specimen onto the media, and we use two different types of agar plates. They're actually kind of like food for the bacteria, and for some plates we add different things that are going to help the bacteria grow. So there's 5% sheep blood in there because bacteria like to use that sheep blood to grow. And then we use a sterile plastic needle in order to kind of spread the specimen across that auger surface so we can get isolated colonies. 
So what will happen now is we'll put these plates into an incubator that simulates the human temperature, which is approximately 98.6 degrees Fahrenheit. We'll look at them after 24 hours of incubation, and then we'll look at them again after 48 hours. So what was surprising is of the 19 individuals that allowed us to culture their phones, all but two were positive for bacterial growth. Uh, the most common bacteria we found would be things that you would find on your, on your hands. So here's an example. Those larger colonies you see are called bacillus, but you can see that there's quite a lot of bacteria on that plate. Two of our subjects had potentially pathogenic bacteria on their phones. One person had some colonies of Staphylococcus aureus over here. The other person had the strain that we uh, refer to as MRSA. Um, that's certainly not something you would want to get into a wound uh, as it could cause an infection. We know that a lot of people are using these phones in the bathroom. And of those 19 people, about 75% actually said, yeah, I use the phone in the bathroom all the time. Two of those 75% of individuals did have uh, positive growth for bacteria that we would normally associate with stool or feces. So let's keep in mind that we did just take a snapshot of cell phones that were within one office, but you know, it just kind of supports the fact that maybe cleaning the phone on a regular basis might be a good idea. All right, so hopefully that video inspired you to keep your cellular phone clean. Wipe it down, clean it off, avoid placing it in the bathroom or taking it in the bathroom with you if you can avoid that at all please do so, okay? So that's just a little bit of information in regards to bacteria that could end up on your cell phone. Let's check for understanding here. I wanna drag and drop some true statements onto the unicellular organisms on the right. Let's see if I can get this large enough. Let's see, here we go. Scroll over just a bit. All right, looking for true statements. We just need to. One cell of a unicellular organism can survive entirely on its own. I was five. I was five. Is that true for unicellular organism all alone? Woo Maybe. What do you think? Let's drag and drop. All right, here we go. Let's check the next piece. Unicellular organisms generally specialize in specific functions. <laughs> Unicellular organisms can usually be viewed without a microscope. True or false? Thank you. A unicellular organism typically behaves the same as a multicellular organism, what do you think? Let's check the last one. Most unicellular organisms reproduce by dividing into two cells. What do you think? Huh? Okay. Let's take a look. I'm going to drag. Hmm. If I drop that there, would you agree? Would you agree? Let's check and see. All right. Good job. Nice work. All right. So the two true statements. One cell of a unicellular organism can survive entirely on its own. And most unicellular organisms reproduce by dividing into two cells. Good job. All right, so we have our check for understanding. We know some basics in regards to unicellular organisms. Let's check here. And we know that we can go into TCI and answer these questions on our own. All right. In what main way is a unicellular organism different than a multicellular organism? How are they different in scale? Okay, so type your answer in that section. All right, and TCI. 
I want to share with you a response. Okay. So here it shares that unicellular organisms are made of only one cell, so they generally exist on a smaller scale than multicellular organisms, which are made of more than one cell. All right. Two, here we go. If you cannot see most cells with just your eyes, how can you see a unicellular organism? How? What do you think? All right. You can use a microscope to see a unicellular organism. Good job. All right, here we go. Last question. How is cell division different for a unicellular organism than it is for a cell in a multicellular organism? How is cell division different? Think about it. Explain. Okay. Okay, you're on to something. All right. So here it shares when a unicellular organism divides, a new organism is made. When a cell in a multicellular organism divides, it creates another cell within the same organism. All right. So that wraps up our discussion today in regards to unicellular organisms. All right. Please take a look back at our conversation about multicellular organisms so that you can compare and contrast the two and be prepared for the following lesson. All right, let's wrap up with our outro. It's been fun, it's been real. We break it down and pick up science skills. Give yourself two claps just for tuning in. Come back, meet tomorrow, we can learn again. Oh, it's been fun, it's been real. We break it down and pick up science skills. Give yourself two claps just for tuning in. Come back, meet tomorrow. We can learn again. Have a great rest of your day. I'll see you tomorrow for more science. Peace.